We'll continue now with previewing some of the exciting new research from the China 2.0 research team. This is uh, work that we're doing myself, Duncan Clark, and Dan Wong. Dan, if you could stand up, please. He's a PhD student here in sociology. We've been really interested in thinking about what kinds of things are driving change in the Chinese internet industry. Today, we'll be previewing some work that we've done on venture capital investment networks. Think about the key research questions. We're really thinking about the relationship between investment firms, investee companies, and then key individuals. And those in this, uh, the data that we're showing to you today are those uh, individuals who are venture capitalists. We could also include in that broad category entrepreneurs, although that's not currently in, in our data. We're thinking about what kind of relationships they have among each other, and why visualize those in a network. We want to understand better what's the relationship between these companies. Uh, you can see here the investors and the investees, and see how the relationship reflects the exchange of information, uh, joint decision making, often co-investments, uh, and resources. The data that we are drawing on uh, has two main sources. Our investment network data comes from Thomson, uh, Thomson Reuters. We've looked at over 769 investment firms uh, that have invested in over 2,000 Chinese investee companies, over 3,100 um, rounds. And you can see here this, this sector breakdown uh, with internet, which is our focus today, being a primary area of focus. In terms of in individuals, we're drawing on data from the who's who in private equity. That includes both venture capital and PE individuals, uh, 600 and 13 of them. With over 203 affiliations, we actually know where people went to school, where they've worked before. And here, Harvard um, tops the list. Uh, Tsinghua and Stanford, you can see there are the kind of affiliations that the individuals have. When we're thinking about visualizing these, what is the power of thinking about a network? I think intuitively, we know what it's like to be networked to other individuals. Um, but the power of network analysis shows in diagramming in very specific ways uh, uh, relationships among the actors. And the algorithms that we're using show that when you have uh, ties, uh, if they're thicker, it represents a greater investment activity together. You can see um, the nodes that are at the center are the ones that have relatively more influ uh, greater influence. The size of the node shows uh, the total amount of past investment activity. And so the layout algorithms uh, bring the nodes that have more common ties uh, closer together. This here is a movie of the evolution of these networks in the Chinese VC uh, investment, specifically looking at the internet sector in the past, um, since 1996 to 2011. Watch with me and Duncan at how it looks. Oh, excuse me. Please put on your 3D glasses now. <laughs> <laughs> next year, next month. <laughs> so you can see here the investment companies, the companies that they're investing in, the relationships as they're evolving over time and bring us up to 2011. Showing here the ties between them and also the node sizes and those that are at the center of the network. We think about this constellation, this is what it looks like in 2011. We can zoom in and look at some of the companies, who they are and what their relationships are. This, for example, is IDG one of the core uh, nodes in the center of the network. And you can see how many uh, different investee companies um, that uh, the IDG is related to. Um, not that much information that's new there, but you can actually go one degree further to see how IDG is connected to other investment firms, building out the network. We also can um, 
visualize the kind of similarity investment patterns as well as the importance of relative companies by linking them together. That gives the idea of the tool that we're using and some of the questions that we're asking. Duncan's now going to talk about what it tells us about investor companies. Thanks. So obviously, and I think uh, Joe had a similar uh, a slide earlier, um, trying to understand the constellation. I think uh, space comes into a lot of this description. It's sort of uh, the final frontier, I should say. But the Chinese internet, as we've uh, witnessed, is actually coming together in, in almost as a new constellation of, uh, of different uh, you know, planets of investors, investees. In terms of the business models, obviously, we have the, you know, uh, uh, in the outer ring here, um, you know, some of the U.S. equivalents, uh, and in the inner ring, some of the Chinese equivalents. Although, as I said earlier, the definitions are, 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 are tricky because, in many cases, you know, QQ isn't just the MSN of China, for example. It's also a games company. But it's good to start thinking about uh, the business models of, of, of these companies and how they're evolving. Um, Today, actually, uh, by the way, we just saw a number that came out of the State Council Information Office. I was saying in my speech at the, at the beginning, my remarks, that China will soon uh, pass half a billion internet users. Well, according to State Council Information Office, today it has, actually. <laughs> so, um, and at that point, uh, already, you know, uh, if we look at the, 12, the 20 most visited websites in the world, uh, five already are, are actually um, in China, if we include google.com.hk. Um, uh, just to go back. And in terms of market capitalization, this has changed actually since yesterday. You see the Chinese internet, you can never, there's actually no point in preparing slides uh, until <laughs> now. So if you excuse me, I'm gonna update this chart. Uh, but, uh, and I think, I think it should be on, on the valuation issue, um, this, this linking in, in certain investors' minds between this Department of Justice, uh, SEC investigation on Chinese companies, we haven't seen any specific mention of internet companies, and the internet companies, that, that link perhaps has been because of the variable investment entity nervousness that we heard, the, Joe mentioned the SENA structure, also known as the VIE structure. Um, in people's minds, there's sort of two unknowns are connecting, and we've seen some of these market capitalizations come down. So uh, we would have told you that, you know, uh, Baidu and Tencent were, you know, number three and number four. Uh, now they're actually number four and number five in the, in the world ranking past, uh, behind Google, Amazon, and eBay. Um, basically, around the $38 billion mark, you have, um, uh, you have uh, uh, Tencent, Baidu, and eBay, just jockeying for position. But the fact is um, that already at half a billion users, and despite some of these recent issues, we still see you know, um, a very uh, strong position in the top five. And, and the question is, what's next? I mean, Taobao, Jack will say they have no plans to do an IPO, probably, again. <laughs> but we all know that Taobao is, is actually the biggest piece of Alibaba, where would they rank here? Uh, much as Facebook, uh, you know, obviously is yet to list. Um, but be behind that, we see the tremendous growth of uh, companies like Sina with Weibo and others. When, you know, how quickly can these guys come, come forward um, up this chart? So in terms of the invest, the sort of constellation, um, this is an example of a, of a sort of small world network that Alibaba, Sina, Ctrip, NetEase, and Baidu are actually quite closely connected through key investors. I guess we could make this into sort of a soap opera, the Chinese internet soap opera, <laughs> you know, um, that ultimately there are, there are factions or affiliations that become because of education, that come because of uh, um, uh, investor relationships. This type of structure facilitates greater transfer of information, uh, perhaps for greater innovation potential and investment opportunities. And what's interesting about the tool that we showed you earlier is that you know, everybody wants to see where are they in that node. and you know, the next phase for us is to be able for people to actually run, you know, how do I, how do I um, match up with, with somebody else uh, and start to think about for the future, what does this mean in terms of if we start to see investment activity in, in one area from the same types of people, what can we uh, anticipate from that? So in terms of who is investing, I mean, this is just a selection of some leading in, uh, investment firms. Um, you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, there are some that, for the first time, have actually set up in China. You know, they've always, you know, ne never invest in a company you can't drive to. Well, you can't drive to China yet, <laughs> but uh, people have actually uh, set up uh, for the first time, in some cases, in, in China, which is a sign, I think, of the, the size, the importance, and also the challenges, you know, of, of investing there. And we see, at the same time, the growth of kind of homegrown firms, Legend Capital, 
um, you know, perhaps uh, a premier example. Uh, but now uh, more and more sort of, let's say, purely private, you know, private equity firms and, and VCs. Um, in terms of investment rounds, you know, foreign companies initially were, of course, leading, leading the charge um, in the early days. Um, in the early days, I mean, there has been some VC private equity activity that predates the internet in China. I mean, there was uh, companies like ChinaVest and others early on making industrial investments. Uh, but it really took off really in 1999, 2000. That's why I chose that as an inflection point with the three internet portals. Um, but as we move forward, um, foreign investment activity uh, uh, you know, is, is not uh, unique now. We, we see a lot of uh, local uh, funds appearing, uh, and obviously uh, progress in, in the regulation of, uh, of, of venture capital in China, uh, the growth, frankly, of just capital available from um, in, insurance companies, pension funds, and others. Um, so, the big question is also re regarding RMB versus U.S. dollar. There's been issues about that, but generally we see a coexistence of these firms. Um, we've seen um, the domestic investors perhaps are better at reaching out to other clusters beyond Beijing and Shanghai. I call that the uh, the Grand Hyatt phenomenon. You know, if there isn't a Grand Hyatt, uh, you may not get certain uh, investors to actually say, you know, I I can't get miles or. <laughs> um, the domestic, you know, if you're going to go out into Lanzhou, for example, or, you know, you name it, uh, you're probably not going to be some, uh, somebody who's used to the sort of united Grand Hyatt formula. Uh, no offense to uh, Grand Hyatt or, uh, or Park Hyatt, I should say, um, but we, we love their uh, sponsorship if they could come forward. <laughs> but uh, I think there is actually, uh, of course, you know, uh, a home court advantage should emerge, uh, particularly as you go further in inland. Um, and Chinese investors tend to be more diverse. as. You know, often Chinese entrepreneurs will describe their business models to a sort of foreign friend, and they'll sort of will all be a bit shocked that they that they're in 19 different businesses. You know, <laughs> that's just life in China is a tendency to diversify, and I think the same uh, is true for investors because of regulatory uncertainty, or as Joe was saying, this sort of incredible bleeding edge competition amongst the Chinese internet firms. You tend to kind of hedge your bets a little bit, um, whereas you know there's a tendency for more pure play investment models uh, uh, elsewhere. So, um, again, I mentioned clusters. It's quite interesting if we map, and again, you know, uh, we can do this in 3D soon, um, the emergence of, say, you know, Beijing, Shanghai, the early days were really the, the key internet nodes. Of, we could add Shenzhen, companies like, like uh, Tencent there. And over time, you see this interesting, and Dan are, are uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably putting words in Dan's mouth, but um, there are many interesting uh, conclusions we can make from the algorithms, uh, you know, particularly the outer lying clusters, you can't really see it here very clearly, but there are companies that tend to be not very connected to others in terms of investors are investing, uh, often state investment. For example, in Shenzhen, uh, we see you know, Shenzhen uh, government-related funds investing in companies. They don't have many co-investors because you know, do you want to go up against you know, the government in a board meeting? So we see at the center of the nodes, particularly places like Beijing and Shanghai, we see a lot more sort of private investment activity and, and more Silicon Valley-like, uh, particularly in the internet. This is showing it geographically, but we can also do it um, uh, uh, by uh, sector. Um, so here we break it down in terms of the, the volume, um, the waves that we saw, the tech bubbles of, two, of 2000, um, and then we saw another big w spike of investor activity in the mid part of the last decade, particularly around e-commerce. And if you map by different sectors, you can see, as I mentioned, it's, it's, it's rather depressing that we spent all this time looking at the internet in China, and we concluded that it looks like a web, like, duh. Uh, but uh, basically, you can see the, the interrelated nature of investment in the internet is very different from, say, the semiconductor uh, investment patterns. No kidding, because huge capital investment required in semiconductors. Uh, also in consumer products, you get these sort of pearl-like investment chains. So you know, this is work uh, that we're still uh, uh, evolving, but I think it's going to be an interesting way um, to uh, add a bit of depth to understanding the Chinese uh, investment landscape. Um, and I think now, I mean, the key is, is people. Um, I think, Margaret, you want to talk a little bit about how people can be nodes. Let's all hope we are power nodes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So bringing this uh, to the individual level, uh, people can be, we have data on people's connections to their universities, uh, to firms, investment firms, as well as to uh, companies. And here's a guess who for you. This is one of our speakers' profiles. You can see affiliated to Stanford. National, any guesses? 
uh, is one of the next speakers after you hear the panelists, I think you'll be able to guess. We can see here, since we're at Stanford, that actually there are more than 40 venture capitalists that have been involved in China um, that are tied to Stanford. And um, we can see also through the network analysis, we're not going to show it here, but as these ties through people um, become these nodes for information exchange, and it's then multiplied through their network of relationships through investors and entrepreneurs. Here it is, the second order as you look at um, how Stanford's closely connected with other universities like Harvard and, ba and um, Beida, as well as Tsinghua, as well as important firms that are at the center. That's just a quick preview of some of the research that we're doing with China 2.0. These are some of the network-related research questions. And with that, we'd like to thank you for that and invite you, if you're interested in knowing more about our research, to contact us at spree.gsb.stanford.edu. We invite especially students uh, as well as uh, others who are interested in data analysis and research and publication to, to connect with us. Thank you very much.